Hello, my fellow human light beings. This is the solar flash update for July 22nd. The transition to 5D has officially begun. The exposure of the dark forces is underway right now. It is my suggestion that everybody listening to me question your reality and then change it. This is the Thunder Wizard YouTube channel, the gathering place for all 5D star seeds and light workers. Please show up to the live guided interdimensional meditation that we have twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Show up for that and you can be a part of this transition. Uh, you know, my experience is that these meditations are having a huge impact on our, on our reality. And we have about 30 people show up consistently for these. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got 30 people who are doing meditations outside of this third dimensional reality, and they are putting their intent towards uh, changing this world, that is huge, huge amounts of energy. So these meditations are having a huge effect on reality. And if you'd like to be a part of it, and if you want to um, put your intentions for your perfect reality, uh, show up and see what happens. People are having a lot of powerful experiences. So that's every Wednesday and Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, so we are talking about the fact that we are shifting. The transition to 5D has begun. We have reached a tipping point. We've reached a tipping point where there is no turning back. Something has happened uh, over the last month. And again, my understanding is that it is a direct result of the work that we have been doing uh, in these meditations. I'm not saying we're the only people. I know there's a lot of, lot of people doing meditations to shift the understanding of this world. So the bottom line is, is that there's enough humans on this planet who are understanding that there is a shift coming and they want to create this shift and it is having a huge impact. So we are officially, since this is the solar flash update, we are officially in the solar flash event. It is an ongoing event that um, officially began in December of 2022. Uh, I believe it was December 21st of 2022. And I know that because uh, I was given that information and shown this um, by light beings. I was taken to a completely different planet uh, in my astral body. And it, was, it was interesting. I was taken to a, a different planet in my astral body by light beings. And it, it looked like, um, you know, a college, uh, you know, lecture hall. And it was filled with a bunch, I looked around, it was filled with a, with a bunch of other people's astral bodies and from all over, you know, different planets. And there were some, I could tell that there were people from Earth there. And, you know, down in the center of this, uh, what to, to me looked like a college lecture hall, there was a light being there who was saying, it's begun and you are very important to this shift and you need to understand what is happening and it has begun you know the solar flash event on earth blah 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 and i found that very interesting that was a, an interesting uh, experience and i've learned in order to keep my sanity i've learned to take everything that happens in the astral realm at face value i don't i don't dispute anything that i see or anything that i'm told and at the same time, when I come back to 3D, I don't become emotionally attached to it. I don't start, you know, I do my best not to start looking for it in the third dimension. I, I'm not always, you know, I, I still, part of me does, but I do my best not to become emotionally attached. And that's what I did. But from that moment on, we started having huge 
solar events that started hitting planet Earth. And every time we got hit with um, a solar storm or solar storms, uh, not only, I mean, I can feel it in my body, I can tell when we're getting higher, higher vibrational solar energy hit, hitting us. I mean, my meditations go through the roof. I feel a lot of intense energy. Sometimes it's anxiety. Sometimes my garbage comes to the surface. Sometimes it's blissful. But I can tell. I mean, I, I, as soon as I feel it, I go and I look online and I see, oh, we're getting hit with a solar storm. So every time we get these solar storms uh, hitting Earth, uh, this energy is shifting us up and I always see some change, usually a pretty big change in world events. So this understanding that the solar waves hitting Earth at this time, changing our reality, has been known for thousands of years. So just to be clear, again, one of the things I, I'm, I, I enjoy science, um, I mean, I'm not you know, I'm not a scientist by trade, but I enjoy actual science, especially physics. But even scientists have come to the understanding that when human beings, modern human beings appeared on planet Earth, it, uh, and when the Neanderthals disappeared, because the, the Neanderthals just disappeared one day. When you look at the, the record, um, you know, there's, there's these extremely successful human beings that we call Neanderthals that were around for 400,000 years. The reason why that's a big deal is that human beings, modern human beings, have only been around for 100,000 years. So these were extremely successful humans that one day just disappeared. And, you know, throughout my life, they've, all, they've said, come to different conclusions about why the Neanderthals disappeared. But the truth of the matter is they just disappeared in the in the archaeological record. Well, as it turns out, at that time that the Neanderthals disappeared in human beings, um, they'd been around for a while, but then they took dominance over the planet. This happened when uh, we are having the exact experience that they had, which is there was a solar maximum, which is happening right now, where the sun is reaching solar maximum, a lot of solar storms. Uh, the uh, the poles on the sun are, are, are flipping, which is creating all kinds of solar storms and solar radiation hitting Earth. And there was also what's called an excursion event on planet Earth, which means that the, uh, the poles of the planet uh, aren't going to shift, but they're, they're oscillating around. There's all this electromagnetic um, confusion going on on the planet, which means that the electromagnetic field is weakened considerably. So the end result is that you're having huge amounts of solar energy, far more than normal, hitting the planet. And scientists know that solar radiation changes DNA. And when, you know, and, and throughout, uh, throughout history, we have you know, all kinds of uh, species dying off and showing up, new species showing up as a result of solar radiation uh, changing the DNA of, uh, of beings. So this exact thing happened. What's happening to us now, because we have this exact scenario going on now. There is a, a solar excursion event happening on Earth, which means that the electromagnetic field is, is weakened. And the solar radiation that's coming from the sun is uh, expanded. And so the combination of these two creates far more solar radiation hitting Earth than is normally possible. And so we're having this exact kind of scenario that happened when the Neanderthals disappeared and human beings took over. So um, bottom line is, is that uh, People have known this for thousands of years. Now in Sumeria, which is the first, as far as we know, the first uh, advanced civilization on earth after the great flood event, they had access to this technology. And we have this, well not we, the dark force elites have this technology. And uh, <clears throat> it's been dubbed 
the um, looking glass project. So this, the technology for the looking glass project, or sorry, project looking glass. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's all over the net. The Y files has uh, a video about it. It's all over the place. But the looking glass project, um, project looking glass gives people the ability to see uh, probable future events, what people like to call timelines. I don't think that's accurate, but that's an okay way to look at it. Looking at alternate timelines and uh, knowing how to manipulate events so that human beings, their mentality will actually focus on and create the probabilities that help the elites continue to have control. So I'm just thinking about this right now in a new way and how powerful this is. So I want you to understand this. I'm going to, again, share with you my understanding of alternate timelines. Because when you understand this, if you can, if you can ingest this understanding, then you will be far more motivated to do the work necessary to create this 5D reality that we want to create. All right, so you understand the idea of alternate timelines. And, and the theory behind that is that there are, there isn't just one universe. There isn't just one Earth. There's infinite Earths happening all the time. And that every time a choice is made, it branches off into another universe. So according to this theory, there are infinite versions of you in infinite universes that have their own timelines that are running. You know, there was a show that just was on Apple called Dark Matter, which came from that understanding. So that is not, in my experience, having been in, uh, experienced other probabilities, other probable realities uh, in higher dimensions. I have a different understanding of it. So there isn't infinite numbers of concrete timelines it's not how it works. There are infinite probabilities, infinite probable realities. So we know from quantum physics, uh, you know, that my, my favorite experiment is light, a particle, or a wave. It depends on the intention and um, expectation of the observer. If the observer expects light to be a particle, then in that experiment, light will not only be a particle, but it will go back in time and it will create a, a past where it was a particle f for eternity. So it creates a past. We've seen this. So that's what's happening. The first major uh, message I got from higher dimensional beings a couple of years ago uh, being said, you are a probability and kept repeating that. And I'm getting flooded with this energy and my understanding of reality is warping and morphing. And I finally understood what this being was showing me, which was that every, every moment that you experience reality is actually you, um, grabbing on to one of the infinite probabilities that exist and manifesting into a physical reality. And just like light, every time that you manifest a physical reality, you create a past. So from your perspective, you're not having this brand new reality being experienced right here and now. What you're experiencing is that there's a past and it's always been this way. And the experience you're having in this moment can be traced back all the way back to your birth. And that's just not true. How do you know? How do we know that? Because there's this thing called the Mandela effect, which we might talk about a little bit. So we, we also now, again, there's all kinds of really crazy, beautiful things coming out in science. And scientists are now coming to the understanding that the brain is not a computer. The brain is, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, it, it's a physical form of technology for your body, 
that allows you uh, to have the ability to create physical realities. So as, as I understand it, this most recent understanding is that quantum waves are coming through us all the time. What is quantum waves? It's what I just said. A quantum wave is energy that has access to infinite numbers of probable realities and that there is no one reality happening unless you have the technology to collapse the quantum wave into one single physical reality that you can perceive and experience. So that's what the brain is. The brain is technology that allows our consciousness to collapse quantum waves into physical reality. So that's what's happening every moment. There is no future. So there aren't, there aren't infinite numbers of set timelines. There is just you and you're manifesting a reality every nanosecond. And each one of those realities has its own past. So you're experiencing a past, a present and a future. But the past isn't real and the future hasn't happened yet. What's happening right now is what you are choosing to manifest. Your consciousness is using your brain to be able to collapse these quantum waves so that you have an experience that you can understand. People who have schizophrenia, for example, one of the reasons that they have problems with reality is because they don't live in that. I forget the name of the movie, but it was a movie that came out, I don't know, probably five or ten years ago. And in the trailer, there are, there are two guys standing on the street corner, and one of them has schizophrenia. And they're standing there, and the schizophrenic guy looks up into the sky, and he points up to a plane, and he says, are you flying that plane? Now, when we hear that, we go, that guy's nuts. The guy, and the guy next to him, I can't remember, but the way I remember it is that he was like, no, <laughs> I'm right here. Can, you know, like, why can't you see that I'm down here, not up there? Well, the guy with schizophrenia is experiencing multiple probable realities simultaneously. His brain doesn't have the ability to collapse the quantum waves into one three-dimensional reality. So he's experiencing multiple realities happening at once. And that makes it difficult for him to function because he's not in one third dimensional reality. He's fragmented. He's schizoid. He's all over the place. So when you understand that, then you understand the, uh, uh, the looking glass project. So in the looking glass project, what the elites are doing, what they've been, what they were doing, I don't know what they're doing now, but what they were doing before 2012 is that they would have an operator sit in this machine and be able to look into probable realities. And then you could input what happens if we create a war? What happens if we create a famine? What happens if we create a pandemic? What happens if we create all of these? Then what probable reality will then be manifested? And they're looking for the realities where they have the most control. So this is what is behind the theory. This is my, uh, my aluminum foil hat. Uh, the tinfoil hat theory behind how the elites are controlling our world. Because they know how to manipulate you so that you will react in a certain way, which will do what? It will make you intend from your emotional state, you will intend a reality based on fear, based on greed, based on, you know, uh, whatever, you know, third dimensional emotion you're having. So if you have a, a bunch of people having the same response, you initiate a housing crisis, you initiate all of a sudden a, an economic collapse. You know, again, all of this stuff, money doesn't exist. This is why, you know, it's so, when I hear people talk about the economy, like it's weather, you know, like right now we're living in, I'm living in Florida and it's summer and, you know, this is hurricane season, right? So that's a real thing. Wintertime it snows, summertime it's hot, you know, in Florida, hurricane season. The weather is a real thing. 
And people talk about the economy like it's the weather. And like if you do something, then the weather will react. Or the, you know, the, the economy doesn't exist. Money doesn't exist. It's a completely made up arbitrary concept. So if you've got people that believe this, you've got an entire world that's now part of this economy and they believe that the economy is real. All you have to do is just introduce and manufacture some kind of problem, a housing crisis, uh, economic collapse, uh, whatever. And then everybody, then you have the whole population of the world responding in an emotional way, out of fear, out of greed. And so that will create a probable reality. And now you have the entire world creating one reality. Right? They're manifesting a reality, and this is a reality that allows the, the deep state, the dark forces, to control you more. So this is the idea behind the Looking Glass Project. So what we know about that, or at least the tinfoil hat people, which I, I, have, I, I think it makes perfect sense to me. According to them, um, once they got to 2012 in their looking glass machine uh, experiments, they couldn't see beyond 2012. That they saw that whatever they did, no matter what kind of tragedy they tried to create into uh, introduce into society, it would always end up creating this awakening event, the solar flash event. So they knew this solar flash event was coming and they were looking for ways to prevent it. So now you can look and understand why, you know, there were three years where people were mandated by law to stay inside their house. You know, and in some places in the world, if you went out of your house, you know, you were arrested. You were breaking the law. And there were people in, I was in Australia at the time, but where I was, it was, you know, we didn't have that issue. But in other more populated parts of Australia, if you went out to your curb, I was hearing stories of people going out to put their trash on the curb and getting a ticket, getting arrested because they were outside of their house. Um, we also know that there are uh, lots of projects out there that these, these are real projects. You can go look them up where uh, planes are used to, you know, put all kinds of chemicals to, to create uh, a block against the sun. And they're saying, well, we have to block out solar radiation so that uh, we can combat global warming. So you look at it now, it looks like somebody's doing a working really hard to keep you from experiencing sunlight. So they know that the sun is going to do something that will have some kind of major shift. And as I've talked many times before, I don't know if I talked about it in this video, but you know, we're going through the exact same, um, the exact same scenario that uh, occurred when the Neanderthals disappeared and human beings took over. There was a solar maximum where the sun was uh, releasing a lot of radiation and there was an excursion event where the electromagnetic field of the earth was reduced. The combination of those two things created a new species. And, and scientists know this happens all the time, that when you see these big bumps you know, in the evolutionary history, it's because there's been solar radiation that has affected the DNA and DNA shifts and then the offspring of those animals are different species and it's an evolution. So we're going through an evolution and the dark forces know this. So they're trying to keep you out of the sun so that you don't evolve, so that you don't awaken. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some things that let us know what has been going on. Uh, and again, I do this to remind myself because I get into this, you know, when, when I'm not having a lot of uh, ethereal experiences, I tend to go back into a 3D mindset. So I do this to remind myself. So t let's take a look. Signs we are in a transitional simulation. 
So the Mayan prophecy predicted that the earth would go through a wormhole and enter a new world in 2012. I was alive in 2012, so I remember when all this happened. And um, people were saying that the world was going to come to an end, that there was going to be this huge cataclysmic event. And it turns out that was a misinterpretation of the Mayan prophecy. The Mayan prophecy didn't say that the world was going to come to an end. The Mayan prophecy was saying that we were going to enter a new world. The Mayan prophecy also said that our solar system was going to go through a wormhole in our galaxy and you know there and we'd pop out you know in, into another part of the galaxy so that's interesting because in 2012 our solar system moved 30,000 light years across the galaxy how do i know that you can go look it up all you have to do is uh, Google Mandela Effect um, Sagittarius Arm um, Milky Way Galaxy. So if you go look for that, you will find it. And there's stuff on YouTube. We even have, uh, I'm so bad with names when I do videos. I, mean, I, I can't remember names, but um, maybe I'm having a Biden effect. Um, whoever that guy is, uh, Tyson, the uh, astronomer. There's videos of him, uh, I believe, before 2012 on his channel. He had, a, he had on his on his series where he says that Earth is in the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way galaxy. But if you go look it up, type in where in the Milky Way galaxy is Earth, you're going to find out. It's not in the outer edge of the Sagittarius arm. It's uh, in the Orion uh, spur. And it's halfway in the galaxy. So it's, it, we're twice as close to the center of the galaxy and we're on the other side of the galaxy. I remember this. I, I was alive during this. I remember you know, being told where we were, that we were on the very outer edge of the Milky Way galaxy in what turns out to be the Sagittarius arm. I mean, I, I heard it for decades, you know, growing up, that we're on the very outskirts of the galaxy. We're so far away from the center of the galaxy. And then if you try and figure out when did this understanding shift, you won't find it. In fact, go, I did this, go and find out when did we know where the, the planet was in the galaxy? And you'll get this really weird, they don't know. They can't tell you when they figured that out. It just, you know, again, this is a very, very typical of Mandela effects where they can't really pinpoint when they knew it happened. You know, and this is, you know, you see this in movies, you see this in, in um, science fiction movies where, you know, somebody's living in a, in a, a, a fictional reality. And then people try and get them to realize that they're in a fictional reality. And they'll say, you know, where were you born? Oh, I was born in Cincinnati. Yeah. So what street did you live on? Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was the. Uh, it was that street that was. The, uh, that's what's happening when you try and find out, like pinpoint exactly who determined that the Earth is in the Orion uh, arm of the of the Milky Way galaxy, you won't be able to find how exactly they figured that out. It's it's weird. So that's that's big. The Mayan prophecy said that the Earth was going to go through a wormhole in 2012, and there would be a new world after that. And here we have that. We we look at it. There's there's all kinds of uh, residual history that says that we used to be on the outer edge of the galaxy in the Sagittarius arm. And sometime between 2012 and now, we traveled 30,000 light years to the other side of the galaxy halfway in. Uh, Mandela effects have been increasing. That is one Mandela effect. That is the, the craziest one. That's, that's the one that broke my brain. Again, two years ago, I didn't believe in any of this stuff. I mean, I, I did not believe in you know, these kinds of tinfoil hat theories. I, I, I made videos against 
them, um, but that broke my brain. The other one that broke my brain was Kennedy's car. You've heard me talk about it. I mean, if you're my age, you remember watching the Sapruder film. I mean, it was constantly being shown on television, constantly. On television and in films, you constantly saw the Sapruder film. It was a, you know, a homemade film, you know, back when you had these little homemade cameras that you had to wind up and, you know, you had a trigger and you, you know, went chick, 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 chick. Uh, And somebody was there, was filming the president as he's driving down, uh, or he's being driven down the street there in, uh, in Texas. And it is burned into my brain. I can see it in my brain right now. It was just a normal car, a normal uh, sedan that had, uh, you know, the, the top was off and it had two seats. It had a front seat in it. And in the front seat was the governor or the, the mayor, I can't remember which, and a secret service guy who was driving the car. And in the back was President Kennedy and his wife. I can still see it. I can still see her climbing over the back and seeing into the front. There was only four people in that car. There was just two bench seats. And when you look at the Sapruder film now, it's a completely different car, completely different car. I mean, it's the same model, but it was altered into this three bench weird thing with, you know, bulletproof glass here. And, you know, so it doesn't make sense. Why is there bulletproof glass here, but he still got shot from the, it doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. That's another Mandela effect. And that's only just one. I mean, there are so many of them. And, and those of you who are a lot younger than me, it's not going to be as big a deal because you were born after the fact, so you, you don't know, but I know. I know for a fact that those two things, you know, the, the Earth was in the outer edge of the galaxy in the, uh, the Sagittarius arm and that Kennedy was in a two seat car. I know that for a fact. And nobody's gonna tell me otherwise. And it wasn't an alternate reality. So a lot of you wanted to say it's an alternate reality. It wasn't an alternate reality. What happened is that the mindset of the collective unconscious of the planet shifted. They created a different probability, which created a different past. So it's not an alternate past. It's not a jump from one timeline to another. It's a different creation. We create the past every single moment. And as long as we're in the same mindset, we create the same past over and over again. When our mindset shifts, a new past is created. So we see that with the Black Tom event. That's another one. I guarantee you that didn't happen. That only came up recently and it sort of pops into people's memory and pops into the history. And, and you, you, if you go looking for that, you know, historians doing videos on the Black Tom event will go, I never heard of this. Even though it supposedly was the catalyst for World War I. It's no longer the Lusitania, it's the Black Tom event that caused World War I. So it's becoming more militant, it's becoming more, more intense, more frightening. And at the same time, we're seeing possibilities of a better future because there are things in the past that are completely changing in a very positive way. Uh, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. Um, to, um, tomorrow is only a day away is the way the song goes. And that's not how it was before. It used to be tomorrow is always a day away, which means you never get there. You know, that, that gave a different understanding to what it was like to be an orphan. And that's what that song was trying to say, that being an orphan and being poor is that tomorrow will, will come, but it's always a day away. It never really gets here. Then it changes to tomorrow is only a day away. It gives you hope. So at the same time, there's, there is the, the Ascension event. We're getting two histories, one, and they're both different from the one that we had. There's one that's more positive, and there's one that's more negative, which means we're going through this transition event. And again, my understanding now from higher dimensional beings is that there's going to be a shift in different realities. And those that are focused on fear and negativity and allow 
the dark force elites to uh, manipulate their brain. They're going to create a darker reality. Those of us who are uh, focusing on the positive, that we're going to cre create a better reality. So for the people in the darker reality, you know, uh, tomorrow is always a day away. And for those of us that create a better reality, tomorrow is only a day away. It's coming. All right. So what else? Um, from 2019 to 2022, non-elected global organizations locked down the entire planet. I want to keep my YouTube video uh, channel, so I'm not going to get into specifics, but global organizations that were not elected, uh, that have three letters, there's multiple ones, they started creating, um, they started legislating, making laws for the entire world that the entire world uh, obeyed. And we weren't allowed to go anywhere. We weren't allowed to do anything. And if you didn't have certain procedures done, you couldn't do things like get on a plane or get on a bus or have a job. Nothing like that has ever happened that I can remember. So this is a sign that the deep state has is losing power. And it's because they knew that after 2012, they were going to lose control. So they're desperately trying everything they can to create uh, a reality based on your reaction that will give them more power. But every time that they overreach, because they're desperate, every time they overreach in their attempts, attempts to control everything, instead of people knuckling under, which they've done, you know, up until 2012, um, now what's happening is every time that they overreach and they try and take your, your freedoms from you, you respond uh, rebelliously and you want to have more freedom. And they knew this was coming. So this is, you know, it's sort of like an addict. You know, they, they know that, that it's going to kill them, but they just keep, they can't stop. Um, dark force narratives have been collapsing. More and more people are spontaneously awakening to the mass media lies. I mean, it's getting really, you know, what's happening now with uh, the things that are happening with the election. Again, I don't want to get specific, but it's so obvious that, you know, that there, that there isn't, uh, a, that there's never been a democratic process. Again, I'll let you do your own research on that. But just watching what's happening, the crazy stuff that's happening with the uh, election and, the, you know, you, you guys saw what happened, you know, a couple Saturdays ago. They're losing it. They are completely, totally panicking and flipping out. And again, if what, what they tried to do a couple Saturdays ago, What they tried to do a couple Saturdays ago, if they had succeeded, it would have created anger and fear, which then would have created a different reality that they could have controlled. And I believe that it has been uh, the result of people um, consciously intending a positive reality like we do twice a week that actually, you know, unfortunately created a discomfort for somebody on their ear as opposed to what would have happened, which could have been absolutely devastating, would have completely changed, would have created a completely different reality that we would have manifested. People are more polarized than ever before in history, which is again what the light beings have been telling me, that there's going to be a, a split, like an actual split in frequencies, where there's going to be a lower reality and a higher frequency reality. And um, yeah, well, you know, I'm waiting to see more and more of that, but that's, that's what I've been told. And I'm, I'm of the belief that that makes sense. Extraterrestrial sightings and visitations are increasing exponentially. How do you know that? Because and nobody, nobody's paying attention, which is, you know, they, they they're so upset about this, but there's there's all kinds of news stories all the time about extraterrestrial spacecraft and the potential of extraterrestrials invading planet Earth and the threat to our airspace. They're talking, they're trying to talk about this, but nobody's paying attention. What was supposed to happen 
is that you were supposed to get flipped out. You were supposed to freak out over the, the idea of extraterrestrials invading planet Earth. And um, they would have taken advantage of that in ways that you can probably, you know, uh, there's a, um, a potential event that has to do with the beam is a very special color, which is this color I'm pointing to here. Um, the reason why I'm not mentioning it is that if, when you mention the name, sometimes uh, YouTube will demonetize you. So that color I'm pointing to of a beam, an event, they would have done that. Um, but nobody's paying attention. You don't care about those stories about supposed alien craft landing and and invading our airspace and so they haven't been able to follow through with that event that they wanted to create so more and more people are uh, experiencing actual extraterrestrial sightings and visitations when you have when you personally interact with higher dimensional extraterrestrials then you know that all of that stuff has been faked people have been abducted uh, and people have been terrorized by the so-called gray extraterrestrials. And we now know that those have been faked. They're real, but they've been manufactured. For what? One reason, to frighten you. And that was a setup so that when they released these so-called news stories that you're seeing now, you know, National Geographic, I can't believe this, National Geographic came out with a a movie I saw it on on YouTube about uh, the extraterrestrial threat you know when you start seeing that you kn it's just so obvious that's again it's very heavy-handed they're overreaching this is a sure sign that we have hit the transition the exposure is underway I'm not going to get specific but there are exposures coming that are so horrific the exposures of what they've been doing and are doing so horrific you've heard about them but i'm not going to talk about them but these things when they are revealed when the average person has to see what is really going on and what has been going on it will be so devastating to people's understanding of reality that more and more people will begin to wake up and when that happens that is when I think the shift will come because uh, I do believe that again in order for there to be enough mental energy where people's brains again your brain is a quantum computer that collapses quantum waves into a specific reality when you have enough people focused on an actual 5d reality that reality will be manifest. And I believe that we are now closer to that than ever before. And even though uh, I still think that it's important that we do, again, come to these meditations, that we do these kinds of meditations like the interdimensional meditation we do, uh, I do believe that people still need to do that. But we are closer than ever. But we're not there yet. So I encourage you to do the work. All of the the tools that I make available on this channel are there for that reason. If you want to shift, you're going to need power. And the kind of power you're going to need is going to be uh, higher dimensional power. All of the teachings that I give you, Awakening the Immortals, Five Element Maoshan Practices, the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong, all of that stuff is uh, now I know, I've been doing it, for so long, I finally now realize why all this stuff is so powerful. It's because it's higher dimensional uh, energy. So I want to make it available to you. That's it for me, my friends. I wish you all the best. Uh, you know what to do. You know where to go. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all very soon again. You know, I'd love to hear from people who have had experiences with the interdimensional meditations please do me a favor and, and put that information in the comments section. Um, I have asked people who have done the Maoshan Five Element Moving Forms to give me videos, and uh, one or two people have responded, and when I get some more of those, I'll go ahead and put together a video of, 
uh, you know, what, kind, what this stuff actually does for you. But again, you want to shift to higher dimensions, we can start doing it now. And this is the stuff that I'm teaching you how to do. Do the practices. You're just coming on and watching the videos, that's great. If you really want to, to get your, your energy shifted up, um, do the practices. That's it, my friends. I wish you all the best. Please remember that you are the most powerful being that has ever existed. Please know that the entire universe was created for your pleasure and that every time that you focus on creating the life of your dreams, all beings in the multiverse evolve and the gods themselves get on their knees and they worship you just because you're, you're living your greatest fantasy. Thank you once again. I love you all. Please take very good care of yourselves and I will see you all very soon. Uh.